Hey, what's up guys? Harley here. So thanks for checking out this video. This one's a little bit different than what I usually make, uh, but I wanted to make this video that kind of talks about how to detect and respond to the, the solar winds incident that is Sunburst. So FireEye has this awesome article that goes over a lot of the details about Sunburst, but the piece that I wanted to cover today is the section that talks about how to actually detect this. So they have quite a bit of different pieces they've released about the behavior around how this malware works and, and actually functions. So being able to detect the behavior going on in your organization can let you know whether or not that you're actively being exploited if you're using the vulnerable versions of SolarWinds or if you have used the vulnerable versions of SolarWinds. So I wanted to talk about all this real quick. Let me give you an overview of some of the resources that I found to be kind of helpful. So there's a GitHub page that FireEye has released that contains really some awesome rules that you can throw into your seam. Um, so depending on what seam you're using, you'd be able to come in here and, and actually take out, like if you're using Snort, for example, you can pull out what Snort rules you want to use, import that into your seam, and you would be able to kind of monitor a lot of this ahead of time. So this is completely free. Go take a look at it. I'll have the link in the description. I would it, I would suggest implementing as many of those that make sense to you. Another another GitHub repo that I'm going to link is Sophos. They seem to be doing a decent job at keeping this fairly up to date um, as far as a list of indicators of compromise that are known to be related to the Sunburst breach or the Sunburst exploit. Um, so we can see we've got a list of domain names, a list of IP addresses, and then a list of hashes to be looking out for. So if you're wanting to monitor for hashes, as long as you've got a way to maybe like an RMM tool, if you can execute PowerShell commands on all of your machines, then you can use something uh, along the lines of this here. And um, I haven't tested this myself, but it seems like it would work well, where you could dump each one of those hashes into a variable called evil hashes, and then you can just run this git child item to search your, your computer and look for these hashes that are present in your file system. So what I would recommend doing is taking a list of these hashes here and then setting up a, a small PowerShell script that can execute across all your machines, and this will give you an idea if you've got any of these actual uh, infected files still present on your file system. Now hopefully <laughs> your antivirus that you're using will be able to pick these up by now uh, but it's it's still a good idea to go ahead and, and check your AV make sure it's doing everything it needs to and just because you don't find these files present anymore doesn't mean that you're necessarily safe. Um, if you actually go through and you read some of the details mentioned here in this in this post it talks about how the attackers are typically they'll use this as their way in and then they'll try to find a different way to gain legitimate access that's a little bit more persistent maybe that's through ssh or through compromised credentials so this isn't necessarily just because you don't have these doesn't mean you're good so you definitely want to keep making sure that you're diving deeper and trying to understand what could be happening so the next step i would definitely be taking is these domain names and these IP addresses create some firewall rules that completely block traffic to either of these. Um, these are known to be tied to some of the public C2s or at least tied to the attackers in some way. So if you have any devices that are communicating to these addresses, you definitely want to kill that as soon as you can. I would definitely recommend taking a look at that. Again though, some of the the details in this post do talk about how the defenders will use for the most part they use vps infrastructure virtual private servers that are local to you so if you're actually being targeted by this organization FireEye has found that say you're in the united states they will spin up a vps instance that's in the united states so that way they'll try to stay as under the radar as possible and this could be problematic right because a VPS is probably going to be using a different IP address every time. Say one of their systems got burned, you kill that connection, they might be able to spin up a new VPS with a new IP. So one of the things you'd want to look at is once you find a VPS provider that you know is communicating back to one of these attackers, do a search on that ASN. There's all kinds of different tools in the bug bounty community. You can just literally Google GitHub ASN tools and um, 
you'd be able to find tools that come back and tell you all of the IP addresses that belong to that associated ASN. And at least for now, you can go ahead and get those on a block list until you know that you're safe. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing that. That's kind of what this is talking about here. Another thing I was talking about is just monitoring for your user accounts, making sure that your user accounts aren't logging in from multiple, especially if it's like remote access, right? You got people working from home. Make sure they're not logging in from multiple geographic locations within an unrealistic time frame, right? Something that they couldn't realistically travel to. And that's one way you could possibly detect a, a compromised account. Another thing that it talks about here is analyzing, um, and I guess really this is, in my opinion, this is like a, a best practice to be doing anyway, um, but this is tracking logins to making sure that, you know, if you've got an account that's signing into five different machines on the domain in a single hour, that's weird behavior. It, it's unlikely a real user is going to be doing that. Maybe those credentials have been compromised and they're being passed around the network. So this is obviously a great detection method, but I think that that goes for any sort of breach. It does say here that these attackers are being really, really smart with and careful with how they approach things. And so what they're doing is they'll drop a, they'll replace legitimate utilities with their own, they'll execute their own, and then they're gonna restore that legitimate file again. So the actual malware, the malicious code, isn't on the system for very long. They basically do a drop, execute, and then get rid of. So one thing that you can do to kind of detect this behavior, if you have a way to monitor your SMB sessions, for example, there's this really awesome application, it's called Threat Locker, and it's just a, a, it's a tool that helps you do application whitelisting. I don't know if in this case it would actually prevent a breach considering SolarWinds actually signed <laughs> signed the uh, the malicious DLL that's causing this issue. So it probably wouldn't have helped in, in preventing anything, but they have another feature where you can monitor for behavior and it shows you like, okay, so this user wrote to this file share at this time, they deleted to this file share at this time, right? They modified this file at this time. So being able to, to follow a delete, create, execute, delete, create pattern in a short amount of time can help you understand, okay, well, hey, that's weird behavior, right? Because if we're deleting a legitimate process, recreating that legitimate process with our own, executing it because it has malicious code, then we delete our malicious code and we recreate the legitimate process. That's what this is saying. So if you've got a way to monitor for that behavior in your network, then that can give you a good indication of whether or not these type of attackers are in your environment because this seems to be uh, a behavior that they're leveraging. So. I mean, in all honesty, there's not a whole lot of new information in this post by FireEye that just doesn't go with like, like everything they're saying here is honestly just like part of what you should be doing as, as your security uh, stance anyway. But I did want to make sure I share, they do have some awesome rules here that can help kind of hunt for these indicators of compromise. And then of course, the Sophos list in case you didn't know about that. So I hope this helped for you. I hope that, uh, you know, maybe you guys are able to, to take this and feel a little bit safer about this whole thing. And um, hopefully you don't use SolarWinds because it's a bad day to be a SolarWinds customer today. But, you know, we've all, we're all going to get breached at some point. So it's just, how do we mitigate that once it happens? Anyway, I'm sure I missed some things, so please leave some comments if, if there's something that you're seeing that I missed. I want to help as many people as we can. Let's get a conversation going around this, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.